Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to configure an AOS server as a load balancer uh, server in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. This scenario is that if you have multiple AOS servers installed and you wanted to configure uh, one server as a load balancer, keep in mind that uh, if you uh, configure uh, a server in load balancer, it will not accept any uh, direct user um, uh, connections. Uh, it will uh, act as a load balancer. Uh, sometimes load balancer in a lot of situation is really a good slick feature to use uh, because uh, load balancer will um, uh, divide the workload coming to the servers according uh, to the AOS servers that you have added a, in, in the load balance cluster. So if you uh, configure AOS as a load balancer, all the client, uh, the, the clients that you are going to use, let's say that you're uh, using uh, terminal servers uh, or RDS servers that um, uh, you provide, uh, that, that's your architecture that uh, terminal servers are going to connect to uh, uh, AOS servers. And you have configured one AOS as a load balancer and that those, the, the clients on the on those particular uh, terminal servers are going to connect with the load balancer and load balancer is going to decide that uh, where uh, he should um, where the uh, uh, the connection should go whether it should go to uh, AOS 1, AOS 2, let's say you have three AOS's and one AOS is a, a load balancer so uh, um, you can um, you can you know configure uh, AOS server as a load balancer in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 and sometimes it's a better option uh, also that uh, AOS uh, a load balancer will decide if uh, a Microsoft Dynamics AX um, one of the AOS instance goes down offline it will route every workload to the next AOS available uh, in the cluster so it also provides the high availability as far as uh, AOS servers concerned so sometimes again I'm uh, emphasizing on that sometimes it's a good option to use uh, load balancing in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 so in this video I'm going to show you how to configure AOS server as a load balancer uh, here I have a uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX installed and I have uh, a client uh, fired up and um, we're going to go and look at a cluster configuration uh, in system administration view. This is where you will con uh, configure uh, um, AOS in instance as a load balancer. So you're going to click on cluster configuration. In my case, I have only one AOS instance, and um, um, uh, that's why I, I won't be able to show you to add different uh, other AOS systems and uh, make one uh, uh, particular AOS as a load balancer but configuration is same it's much easier um, all you need to do is um, it will auto detect if uh, other AOS instances are also pointing to the same database but um, if you wanted to add you can click on new and add uh, other AOS instances right here and once you add let's say you have added three AOS instances uh, up here they will show right up here and you can click any one of them and then you can get the configuration right here if you uh, notice right here that uh, AOS instance wherever whichever instance that you decided to use the load balancer you need to click this um, uh, load balance column uh, check bar you need to or you need, you can select this and you, then you can click that and all you need to do is close that and it'll act as a load balancer keep in mind that um, uh, in a cluster if you have um, a load balancer at least at least uh, one AOS that is not acting as a load balancer needs to be there in that particular cluster so that uh, the load balancer can actually uh, route the traffic to that non load balanced AOS instances so uh, this is a, a pretty easy configuration as far as uh, load balancing goes um, but uh, this is in the scenario again where you have multiple AOS instances and you are configuring your cluster to use load balance um, again one more advantage of uh, this which I have mentioned a little bit earlier that um, if you have configured load balancer and you have multiple AOS instances let's say that one instance goes down uh, the, the all the traffic will be passed to the next AOS online instance and it is good in a scenario where you have to do some maintenance on one AOS instance and you need to bring that AOS instance offline and you don't want your uh, business to go down. 
uh, even though it might uh, be a little too much load on one AOS instance but per, uh, at least there won't be outage in production so it is always a, a good thing that if you have multiple AOS instance to configure as a configure one instance as a load balancer and this is it uh, I hope it helps